Okay, welcome everyone to my continuation of what is category theory. Today I would like to tell you about T curve T's, or because I'm trying to wrap up the whole story, it's my first uh, applications here with applications in mathematics, meaning applications here in mathematics. So, how can you apply something like category theory to mathematics? Um, here comes an example. And it's really beautiful. And um, maybe actually it's it's physics, not mathematics, depends a little bit. So TQFT stands for topological quantum field theory. And they arose from physics, um, but I will treat them as completely mathematical objects. And because topological quantum field theory is a mouthful, we could just go with by TQFT. So TQFT, I will explain what those are, and you will see how they are well are applied in, or I can give you a hint how they are could be applied in topology mostly. Um, as I said, they arose in physics. And uh, the starting point here is this topological version of a map, which is a cobordism. So in this picture, it would be the W thing. Um, so W is an n plus one dimensional manifold, and M and N are n dimensional manifolds. So in this case, this is two dimensional. It's a surface, as you can see, and those are two are one dimensional. And in this picture, my, the reading convention is left to right because I stole the picture. I personally, on the next slide, would like to read from bottom to top, but as usual, to put two people in a room and try to find a compromise between their, well, opinions. Uh, it's not so easy. Um, it, anyway, so it's a messed up convention by someone, at least probably by me. But anyway, just keep in mind on this picture, I'm reading left to right. On the next two pictures, uh, or I'm going to read bottom to top. Anyway, so this is the idea. Um, so they're one dimensional objects. If you can't see M, M is basically those two circles here. Here's one, here's one. And N is this bigger circle here. Here's one. And M is kind of the surface between them, which I don't even attempt to draw, uh, but whatever, whatever it is. Here's a hole, and here's a hole. I just said, which I don't even attempt to draw. But anyway, um, this is kind of an approximation of the nice picture in the middle. Uh, anyway, and I would like to think of these as maps between M and N. There will be some, well, technicalities involved. You need to make sure that you know which object is where. In this case, uh, here should be the source and here should be the target. But kind of this picture works in general. Um, okay, so that's a manifold uh, cobordism. It's called a cobordism. It's kind of a higher dimensional version of a map, if you want. And it goes from one boundary to the other in an appropriate sense. And I'm going to stick in this video with the two-dimensional version. Well, why? Because I like to draw pictures, but actually nothing really stops would, would stop me um, to make higher dimensional claims. Just, well, as I said, I like to draw pictures and I just can't draw a picture of a 512 uh, manifold. That's a little bit sad, my apologies, but well, let's just stay with 2D. Anyway, it's already pretty exciting. So I would like to discuss this category two cop, which is not to be confused with the two category two cop. It's a category two cop. And the difference is I'm not, I don't have objects, which are points. I just have the following setup. I have my manifolds now read from bottom to top between one manifolds, what are one manifolds, circles, uh, closed one manifolds, circles, and well, kind of a surface type thing between them, usually called, in this case, this guy is usually called the pair of pets. So I can think of my mo my uh, arrow F here. So it will be the arrows will be those diagrams, those cobordisms, as being a map from well, let's say circle cubed to circle squared to make my life easy. So here, two circles, uh, three circles to two circles, and similarly, I can think of my map G as being a map from two circles to one circle. And there's an obvious way to composing them, right? G times F, stack it on top. So this is actually a category, and the arrows are those funny cobordisms. Really nice category, right? So um, surfaces, a uh, surface category, a little bit different from one cop, uh, but kind of the same flavor, just one dimension higher. Um, turns out that this is the first non-trivial case. That's why I like to do it. And well, no, strictly speaking, I like to do it because I can still draw it. Uh, three cop would be a little hard, harder to draw. But anyway, this is the setup. Um, and the point is we can phrase a little bit uh, some extra properties of this category in the language we have kind of learned. So I, I claim this is a symmetric monoidal category, symmetric monoidal category. And the monoidal structure is kind of the usual one. You take F, you put it, oh, you put it in this case to the, to the right, and you take G and you put it to the left. And this is G times F. 
So uh, juxtaposition is usual, I just stick them together, the usual uh, monoidal product on diagram categories, if you want. And there's also a symmetry because I, I wasn't really careful enough. So somehow those things are kind of numbered, if you want. They're kind of ordered. They're not just circles, but they're ordered circles, numbered circles. So this is not the identity. The identity, by the way, is just a cylinder. It's kind of the identity, right? If you stack it in this sense, it just doesn't change the manifold, the underlying manifold. Uh, but this symmetry here is not the identity, is not the identity, because secretly my manifolds are numbered. And it's this ex would exchange two and one, right? As you can see, it was just a swap. And this is a braiding or a symmetry in my category. And this whole thing, the two corp, is actually a symmetric monoidal category. That's kind of using the language that we are uh, hopefully by now reasonably used to uh, because we want to use category theory in the end. And then the kind of the crucial idea here is that a TQFT is a nice representation of that category. So a topological object on the left, two cop here, uh, so here, two cop, and uh, an algebraic object on the right, uh, vector spaces, for example. And the idea is, well, it should be a representation. We start with something that we like to understand, two cop, and we present it on something we do understand, linear algebra in this case, case uh, finite dimensional vector spaces. And we do that in the language of application here, yes, using the language of category. So TQFT traditionally denoted by Z um, to make some connections to statistical mechanics or so partition functions, doesn't matter. So let's just use Z as a symbol anyway. And that's a symmetric monoidal functor. There's a notion we understand from the symmetric monoidal category to another symmetric monoidal category from the one we like to understand to the one that is kind of easy to the one that has linear algebra built in. It's pretty cool. And let me explain why I call this an application well, first of all, we are using the language of uh, categories, right? We're not using anything fancy here. And it's really an application in topology in this case. Um, for example, Z of a closed manifold, like the torus here, which is really a, a manifold from empty to empty, is an invariant of the manifold. So it doesn't depend on how you draw it, for example. And under this factor, that's kind of the point of the factor, empty would go to K empty would go to k, that's the point of a factor, so kind of symmetric monoidal factor in this case, and this beast here goes to a linear map between them, and what is the min linear, so whatever, f, and the linear map, what is the linear map from k to k, that's a number. So this actually is some number as an element in k, or some scalar if you want. So we can associate a functor, in particular associates a number to manifold. So closed manifolds. And that number is an invariant of the manifold, meaning it doesn't matter how you represent your manifold, and it's still an invariant. And sure, this should have applications in topology. Maybe for the torus, it's not super exciting, but if you think about a higher dimensional TQFT um, and higher dimensional manifolds are super hard, um, and then you get numbers associated to them, a numerical invariant, that's pretty cool. And definitely, this should have applications or has applications in topology. And we're just using the language. We've learned the language of category theory. And as I just said, it actually works more general, but <laughs> I can't draw pictures anymore for 512 manifold, as I said. Um, OK, so it kind of turns out that the two-dimensional case, let me just mention that, is a little bit nicer than the n-dimensional case in general. Maybe I shouldn't say a little bit. It's much nicer than the n-dimensional case in general because, well, we're doing category theory. So the first step would be to collect all TQFTs in the category, and you can do that. And I call it 2D TQFT. And you can actually identify that category. It's not very complicated. It's an algebraic object, uh, which I don't want to discuss in more details, but it's, it's well known to algebraize. It's called kind of a category of commutative Frobenius algebras. So you cannot just write down factors, but you can also classify them. So in that, that's, that's a pretty cool, uh, actually, statement. Pretty non-trivial. Um, and the underlying reason why 2 is so nice is you can actually uh, define it by generators and relations. So like, like groups can be defined by generators and relations. Categories could be defined by generators and relations as well. And the generators are basically the pictures we we have seen, well, I haven't showed this one, cups and caps, they're the units and the co-units, if you want. This one is identity. And then we, of course, have the pair of pens, either, well, upside down or not, and the swap. And this 
generated some relation means it satisfies a certain number of relations, which I don't want to write down because my slide is too small. But one of them is a zigzag relation, which you hopefully like. And the other ones, are, of course, also topological relations that you can describe very nicely in terms of algebraic diagrams. Anyway, so this was my application of a language of category theory to something like topology. So the point is you can formulate in an appropriate sense using categorical language um, how to produce invariants of topological objects. So this was this idea of a TQFT, the functor from a topological category to an algebraic category, which is a pretty cool uh, and kind of a good idea and a really nice application of the ideas of category theory. And I hope you liked it. Anyway, I also hope you liked the video, enjoyed the video, and I also hope to see you next time.